Hi, I'm Brian Segment with Xerox, and I'm here with Michelle Fornell, the Senior Systems Engineer on the Versant program. And what we're going to do is have a look under the hood, and we're going to have a look under the hood of the new Xerox Versant 3100 press. So, Michelle, we know a, a lot of things about the press. We can do 350 GSM. We can run a duty cycle of 1.2 million prints, average monthly print around 250,000. One of the big things is registration. How do we get it on this press? Can we look under the hood? Yep, let's take a look. Okay, um, we all know the paper come from uh, on the Xerox product come from left to right. Okay, so the first thing we do coming from three, one, two, three, or one of the high cap feeder from three, six, and seven, or eight and nine, if we have a dupe uh, tandem high cap feeder, the sheet come in and uh, as you know, the, our paper path is pretty straightforward, the entire length of, of the printer going to the finishing device. So what we want to make sure that when the paper come to the pre-registration assembly, that we are uh, set and we measure the exact position of the paper. So what we do is um, we have many uh, sensors uh, to, to be able to accomplish that, uh, that uh, matter. Okay? And there's a little gate here. When the paper come in, it goes up. Mm -hmm. and then ensure the paper is straight and flat against that edge. So much like a head stop on an offset press, so I'm, I'm yes. going to um, manually or physically register that piece of That's paper. That's correct. And then the contact image sensors are? They're located on top here, okay? And again, many, many sensors are, are, are in function to ensure you got the lead edge, the inboard side, the outboard side, and then we measure all those, those coordinates. So nice straight paper path. I know that on, uh, on the Versin 3100, we have uh, half a millimeter uh, registration, right? Yep. So yep. plus or minus half millimeter, that skew magnification perpendicularity. So that's pretty nice. And magnification. And magnification, yep. excellent. So at this point, we know exactly what the, paper, the piece of paper is. And then we, we measure this every print, every sheet coming in. Every paper. sheet. Yes. Mm -hmm. Then this information is sent back to the controller of the printer in the back of the machine. This information is calculated and transformed to the ROS, the uh, scanner assembly, mm -hmm. ROS laser assembly. And then at that point, we start to uh, write the images on the drum. Okay. So you get the toner on top here. Okay. okay. And so right on the toner, right? Mm -hmm. okay. okay. The reason it's there because we, we trickle down the toner and the de developer. Okay. The lasers are located under this cover here. And if you uh, notice, there's little four little spots here. This is where the glass is and where the light come down to be able to uh, discharge the drum. Okay. The reason there's a little opening here that if for some reason the dirt get in there, you can come and clean it. Well, that's really nice. So kind of a lot of self-maintenance features, right? Like if I notice it's 5 o'clock at night and I'm, I've got to get a job out and I notice a spot, I can go ahead and I can, I can fix that. Nice. So this, this information from the laser is transformed right to the drums. There's a drum per color. Okay. And we, then we start to uh, get the, the image right on the drum, mm -hmm. okay? If for some reason, again, you talk about maintenance, the customer uh, notice a spot or, or a scratch, mm -hmm. it can replace a drum in seconds. So just pop it out, right? Pop so out. again, a customer replaceable uh, unit. unit. Okay. Excellent. So you get the drum here, you got the, uh, 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 the developer assembly here, mm -hmm. which take the toner and mix it with the, the material, the developer material. And then this image is going right down on the next assembly, which is the IBT belt. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I know these are light sensitive, so, yeah, you know, kind of do it kind of quick, right? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Okay. Then the image is going to the image transfer belt. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we're going to go back to our paper, paper path assembly. So the image is on the belt going around. Okay. Paper come in, and when they arrive at this contact point here, this image on the belt is transferred to the paper. So it's actually written right to the paper there. Correct. Mm -hmm. And it's called the second bias transfer roll. Okay. Okay. And then you'll do your best to explain this, what, how does this, this so, work? So a bias transfer biases electricity, right? So I'm going to, you know, zap that bias transfer, either give it more electricity or lex less electricity, depending on the amount of image and the type of paper that I'm using, yeah, right? Yeah. It's a little bit more complex than that, but it's sure. know, roughly right. For simple, for a marketing guy, it's a simple way it's, to talk about yes. it. Yes, and you're learning and, over And the then the fuser, yep. right? Our fuser is here, but what we can do is we get a 10-bit and we're actually writing four times the amount of pixels on a page, right? So more pixels on a page makes for a better image, and it's, it's fused right here. So as all the zero graphic product we have, we need to f make sure the, paper, the, the image is fixed to the paper. We use temperature. Mm -hmm. you know, like a so I'm going to use some heat. 
Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, the, the, the good advantage of this is compared to the traditional role mm -hmm. to make this happen, we uh, uh, took the, the technology from the color press, which was a big giant. The belt. higher end, right? Yeah. Higher and end we, press. We shrunk it a little bit, okay, but the technology is still valid here to uh, make sure you get very consistent heat around the belt, mm -hmm. meaning that from page to page, from media to media, uh, different stock, you can maintain this image quality solid. So, and so. And the speed, and maintain that. So speed. that's nice. So, mixed media, I can heat up, I can cool down. Yep. And even things like uh, an envelope. Do I need to, I don't need to change the fuser, Same do fuser. I? Yeah. Same fuser. Same fuser. Same fuser, 350 GSM. Yes, don't, no need to b go back and forth with different fuser. Terrific. Okay. Um, then we're going to go to the next uh, part of the, uh, the printer. Yeah, this is kind of, uh, I like to say this is where the magic happens, right? So this is the full width array. I would call that more magic. More magic, right. Okay. So because we're going at the high speed of uh, 100 prints per minute, mm -hmm. okay, the prints are coming out. And if you, if you make uh, a print on a coated paper mm -hmm. and you get a lot of coverage on it, the, uh, the toner is extremely hot. Mm -hmm. And if you make a, many, many prints in a row, they're gonna, they have tendency to stick together. So you need to remove, so we heat the paper and then we need to remove the heat from it. So we have a module here called the cooling modules, which is a uh, two belt, okay, located here. The sheet of paper goes in between, okay? Mm -hmm. And the, uh, the good thing about this material, of, uh, this is the same material as, as the IBT belt, it sucked the heat out of the paper. So really instantly, a about good six inches, you know, uh, distance. A good transfer, right? So it's going to transfer. It's a reverse transfer of the heat. Excellent. Okay. okay. Then we have a little uh, heat sink here with a fan in the back and we suck that hot hair right out of the machine. So my heat is going to go into that belt. I'm then going to pull it into this cooling block Send and it out right out. That's correct. And I don't need to vent the machine to outside. No, nope, Terrific. Nope, nope. Yep. Uh, the next component here is, uh, is used for uh, three reasons. Okay. Okay. So uh, on the smaller device, we have a, a, a tool called the uh, Sika tool. Right, on and the can, Versant 180. Yeah, mm -hmm. we can achieve you know, uh, the registration from front to back perfectly. We can do transfer image from side one, side two also. And we, we can also do a, a density uniformity from inboard, inboard to outboard. So, Michelle, we call that like a semi-automated process on the 180, right? Because I'm running a sheet and then I'm scanning it back in. Yep. Um, more automated here on the 3100? So, yeah. So, this, this one is called the FWA, the full width array, mm -hmm. okay? The scanner we have on the smaller machine is online, located right, right under this right cover. Right in there, okay. Yep. And then we use a, a, a LED process right, mm -hmm. right on in this location here. And then we have a roll here that w before the machine starts, we, we, we make sure that it's adjusted properly. We uh, move this roll in position here, and we want to make sure white is white. Okay, because mm -hmm. the paper is not always white. Mm -hmm. It could be bluish, could be yellow, could be uh, porous. We want to make sure that we know what the white is. So we measure this from inboard to outboard. Okay. Yes, th it's uh, th this information is sent to the scanner. Okay, the FWA scanner. So that kind of gives me my white point? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And then I can measure this white point to any reading after, after a while. Okay. And then we, uh, we move this location here and we want to make sure that we know where the paper is uh, Height-wise, mm -hmm. okay. So we measure the lowest point of that roll. So, so I can actually like feel, steps. right? Yeah. So that's stepped up. That's you know yeah, you indented, and this starts to kind of come up, and right? Then we do the same thing in the metal, and then the same thing at the and the inboard side. So the sheet of paper is going to ride over top that, of yeah. that. So okay. that, at this point, we just make measurement, mm -hmm. okay? Then we measure where the where this little Z here mm -hmm. is, okay? And then. We're going to send a piece of paper in the machine, and then we're going to look, we're going to measure where the, the paper is traveling in the machine. So we will compare the edge of that sheet to the top of the Z, mm -hmm. and then we're going to measure, measure, measure until the end. And then if at the end we're about you know three millimeters away, we know we have a skew mm -hmm. of three millimeters from lead edge to trail edge. Okay. So all this information is put in the machine. Now I can predictly measure and change my image on the piece of paper to match side one and side two. I got it. So it's going to calculate it depending on how heavy that piece of paper is, whatever that size yep. is, yep. it's going to send it across yep. it and that's how I get my great this, front to yes. back registration. This is why we do 10 sheet. When we do the adjustment for the profile of the mm -hmm. alignment, right. we make three prints with the paper that we are using. We measure it, we apply the change, we make three more and then we make 
calculation, we make three more to make sure, and then the tenth one is your final product. So, so that's really terrific. If I'm cutting something front to back registration, I really want a critical. For the most part, the press is really going to be right in line, yep. but if I've got a stock that's misbehaving because of humidity or temperature, or maybe even I cut the paper not exactly right, yep. right this is going to help me that's compensate correct. for that. Uh, this paper here, we, we printed this earlier, okay, so this is when we do the same process FWA is used to make the density inboard or outboard, okay, so we're going to do, we're going to print those CMYK at uh, 100%, 40%, and 20%. Okay. And we're going to measure, you know, across and make the adjustment and then send this information back to the controller. So that scanner is going to read that information. With this information, okay, and make the adjustment to make sure we're even from both sides. That's why when we look at this, we always do this to make sure that we're even. Right, because that, that's what happens. You know, you, you print something maybe like a business card and one side doesn't it's match up. It looks good on a sheet right. until I cut it. So that's going to fix that. People always ask why I'm doing another sheet here. This, this one is called the RGB. Mm -hmm. RGB is only a mix of CMYK. Right. So when you start to mess around, I'm, I'm going to change the coordinate of, uh, of magenta, mm -hmm. okay? And I'm going to change the, the cyan. You mix them together, it's a different color. Yeah. So when you start to mess around with those ones, you may make big effect on the RGB. So it's going to read CMYK so and RGB. The, the RGB is just to verify your Excellent. formula is correct. Okay, great. Okay? So this is what the, uh, we, we make this one at the end. Super. That complete tour, the FWA. Uh, Excellent. You know, so, so we know that really gives you the level of automation on a Versant 3100 press, right? Don't forget the, uh, the big inverter assembly. Oh, so duplex, because that's important, right? Yeah. Um, if I want a duplex 350 GSM, where does it happen? Right down in there? Yeah, the inverter assembly is, is right, it's located right here. What we do is we just go this way and send it back in the process here. Uh, the reason we can run 350 GSM. Uh, duplex is the radius is so large that we can afford. Really You've got a lot of real estate, and you know one of the questions comes up: What's the difference between the Versant 180, the Versant 3100? Well, it's 80 versus 100 pages, but there's a lot more automation here. There's a lot more real estate. This is much more of a production press. I'm going to do a lot more volume, and I have a much much higher level of automation. Yeah. Hey, Michelle, thank you. Great to have a look underneath the hood. We that really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, for more information, go to Xerox.com. We actually have a white paper on the Xerox Versant family of presses, and you can learn more about what's underneath the hood. Thank you.